In the ancient history of Western Europe, the Kingdom of West Francia emerged from the Carolingian Empire under the Charlemagne, the Holy Roman Emperor of the 9th century. This kingdom, nestled in the vast expanse of Gaul, bore witness to the ebb and flow of history, shaped by the rise and fall of kings. The tale begins in the aftermath of the Western Roman Empire's demise in the 5th century. Gaul, once a Roman stronghold, became a mosaic of separate realms governed by the Visigoths, Alemanni, and other ethnic groups. It was in this landscape of fractured kingdoms that the Salian Franks, led by Merovec and Childric I, carved their destiny, establishing the Merovingian dynasty. The pivotal moment came with Clovis I, a monarch of legendary stature who, from 509 to 511 CE, unified the disparate lands to claim the title of the first king of the Franks. Following Clovis I's reign, the kingdom underwent a series of divisions and reunions under rulers like Clothri. The political landscape was shaped by the powerful mayors of the palace, such as Papana Verstal, who ascended to the role of Duke and Prince of the Franks. The Carolingian dynasty, heralded by Papon the Short and later by the renowned Charles Martel, marked an era of stability and prosperity. Charles Martel's triumph over Muslim invaders at the Battle of Tours in 732 CE secured the borders of Francia, paving the way for the reign of his successor, Papon the Short, the progenitor of the Carolingian dynasty. The saga reached its zenith with Charlemagne, who ascended to the throne in 768 CE. His conquests, military prowess, and dedication to the church culminated in his proclamation as Holy Roman Emperor in 800 CE, establishing the Carolingian Empire. The mantle passed to his son, Louis I, who sought to unite the empire through faith and vision. However, the harmonious empire envisioned by Louis I began to crumble upon his death. A power struggle erupted among his sons, plunging the region into civil war. The Treaty of Verdun in 843 CE marked the division of the once mighty Carolingian Empire. West Francia, under the rule of Charles the Bald, emerged as a distinct realm, forever altering the course of history. As the Kingdom of West Francia unfolded, it faced external threats, notably from Viking raids during the 9th century. The peace forged between Charles the Simple and Viking leader Rollo in 911 CE shaped the kingdom's destiny fostering prosperity under successive kings until the rise of the Capetian dynasty in 987 CE. The early history and division of West Francia encapsulate a saga of conquest, power struggles, and the enduring spirit of a kingdom that played a pivotal role in shaping the future landscape of France. In West Francia's history, the echoes of Charlemagne's relentless pursuit of power resonated through the corridors of time. The Saxon Wars, waged between 772 and 804 CE, left scars on the land, culminating in the infamous Massacre of Verdun in 782 CE, where 4,500 Saxons met their demise at Charlemagne's command. The repercussions of these wars reverberated beyond the battlefield, reaching the shores of Denmark and setting the stage for a chapter of West Francia's story dominated by Viking raids. Long before the Saxon Wars, the Franks and Scandinavians shared amicable relations, cultivated through trade. However, Charlemagne's territorial expansion raised concerns among his northern neighbors. The Saxon leader Vidukin sought refuge with Siegfried of the Danes, sparking tensions. When Charlemagne demanded a halt to this policy in 798 CE, Siegfried complied, but the Danish king Gottfried reacted with military might in 804 CE, challenging Frankish dominance and leaving an indelible mark on the annals of history. After Charlemagne's death in 814 CE, the Viking raids intensified. The allure of Frankish wealth, coupled with the absence of Charlemagne's formidable presence, drew Viking raiders up the River Seine. The first raid in 820 CE met with defeat, but subsequent incursions, notably in 841 CE, marked a turning point. Ausgare, a Viking leader, laid waste to Rouen and its surroundings, setting a precedent for future raids. The saga continued under the reign of Charles the Bald, with Viking leaders like Regin Harris and Hastine leaving their mark on the Franks' collective memory. In 845 CE, Regin Harris besieged Paris, forcing Charles the Simple to negotiate for peace. The waves of Viking raids persisted, with leaders like Ausgare and Bjorn Ironside wreaking havoc. Charles the Bald sought a solution in 860 CE, enlisting a Viking chieftain named Velen to quell the rising tide of raids. Despite these efforts, the Vikings, undeterred, returned in 885 to 886 CE, led by Rollo, and laid siege to Paris once more. 
Amidst this tumultuous period, the Counts of West Francia, with their autonomous power, played a crucial role. The structure of West Francia, following the division of the Carolingian Empire, empowered Counts to assert control over distinct principalities. The policies of these Counts aimed at enhancing their power, fostering a fragmented landscape vulnerable to Viking raids. One standout figure was Odo of Paris, whose rise to power mirrored that of his father, Robert the Strong, Count of Anjou. Odo's valor came to the fore during the Viking siege of Paris in 885 CE, where he defended the city and repelled the invaders. Charles the Fat, arriving later, opted for a financial settlement rather than engaging in battle. Odo's ascendancy to the throne in 888 CE marked a turning point. His decisive defense of Paris resonated with the people, leading to Charles the Fat's deposition. Odo's reign, however, faced challenges as the nobility pushed for Charles the Simple, the legitimate heir, to assume the throne. Eventually persuaded to step down, Odo's legacy endured as a defender of West Francia during a tumultuous era defined by Viking raids, internal strife, and the ever-shifting sands of power. A pivotal chapter unfolded as Charles the Simple grappled with the enduring menace of Viking raids. By the late 9th century, these raids had become a near-century-long scourge, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. Charles sought a resolution, and a key figure emerged from the ranks of the Vikings. Rollo, a chieftain whose raids, though marked by plunder and enslavement, displayed a distinct preference for capture over outright carnage. Janet L. Nelson's insights shed light on the Northmen's strategic aims, emphasizing their desire to capture rather than kill. The lucrative slave trade fueled their prosperity, making it more advantageous to seize captives than to annihilate entire communities. Rollo, entrenched in West Francia since the Paris siege of 885 to 886 CE, conducted successful raids from 887 to 911 CE, presenting a formidable challenge to Charles' attempts at containment. In a pragmatic move, Charles the Simple turned to a familiar playbook, negotiating with the Vikings. Drawing on the precedent of paying off Viking chiefs, Charles extended an unprecedented offer to Rollo, a parcel of land and a matrimonial alliance symbolized by Rollo's marriage to Charles' daughter Gisla awaited the Viking chieftain if he embraced Christianity and became a loyal vassal of West Francia. The Treaty of St. Clair sur Epte, signed in 911 CE, laid the foundation for Rollo's integration into the Frankish realm. Rollo's newfound lands evolved into Normandy, a testament to his commitment to the accord. Contrary to the pillaging marauder of yore, Rollo transformed into a guardian of West Francia, shielding it from further Viking onslaughts. His governance marked a period of respite, fostering reforms, trade, and agricultural advancements that breathed life into his domain. The alliance between Charles the Simple and Rollo ushered in an era of relative peace and order, a welcome departure from the tumultuous years that had plagued West Francia since its establishment in 843 CE. Yet, as history unfolded, challenges loomed on the horizon. Charles' rule faced internal strife, notably with Robert I, Odo's younger brother, who contested rights and titles in the kingdom of Lotharingia. The Battle of Soissons in 923 CE saw Rollo fighting alongside Charles, resulting in Robert I's demise. However, the victor, Charles, was captured, and Rollo retreated to Normandy. Rudolf of France, succeeding Robert I, wore the crown until 936 CE. Charles the Simple, languishing in captivity, witnessed a complex interplay of power and succession. Rollo, having retired from leadership in 927 CE, left an indelible mark on Normandy before his death around 930 CE, having steered his realm through the shifting currents of political upheaval. As the pages turned in the chronicles of West Francia, Charles the Simple and Rollo's legacy endured, setting the stage for subsequent rulers, Louis IV, the illustrious Lothair, and Louis V, culminating in the ascent of Hugh Capet in 987 CE. The Viking influence, once a source of turmoil, became an integral thread in the fabric of West Francia's cultural and ethnic tapestry. The Norse, assimilating into Frankish society, embraced Christianity and contributed significantly to the region's development. While the TV series Vikings, despite its historical liberties, offered a dramatized portrayal, it succeeded in capturing the essence of Viking influence in West Francia and Rollo's pivotal role in stabilizing the region. The assimilation of Norse and Frankish cultures created a unified identity, laying the groundwork for the emergence of France under the Capetian dynasty.
the echoes of Charles the Simple and Rollo reverberated through the centuries, leaving an enduring imprint on the history of West Francia 